again for tuning in with us here at Carolina Raptor Center. Today I have one of my personal favorite raptors, the American Kestrel. So this lovely lady, her name is Belle and she is one of our animal ambassadors. She is one of my favorite birds to bring to education programs. When we go to different schools and community centers and different festivals, because one, she's obviously gorgeous. She has some beautiful colorations. But if you notice too, she moves around a lot. She's a very animated bird. She has a big personality for such a little bird, uh, which makes her a lot of fun to work with. Now, kestrels are really cool birds um, because even though they're small, they are mighty birds of prey. If you guys notice, she still has super strong feet and really sharp talons and that allows her to catch uh, different animals out in the wild. Now this is a type of falcon, so out in the wild she likes to eat different types of birds and even insects. So those sharp talons are perfect for grabbing birds and insects right out of the air. <laughs> so you might notice her tail is bobbing a lot. It's really um, a good sign. Her tail bobbing shows me that she's pretty content with her surroundings um, and that she is excited to be out and about eating her food, checking out her surroundings. Um, it just shows me that she's really comfortable. She's really entertaining to watch, so I'm going to sit and watch her for a little bit too as we talk here. Now, as you can see, she used those talons to hold on to her food and she used that sharp beak of hers to rip up bite-sized pieces of food. So she has those strong talons and she has that nice hooked beak. And she uses that, as you saw, kind of like how humans use a knife and a fork. We use our forks to hold down that nice juicy steak and we use our knives to rip up uh, bite-sized pieces. And so that's exactly what she does when she gets a bigger piece of food. Right now she's really fluffy and that's also a sign that she is comfortable um, I'm pretty content on where she is. So we'll watch her eat a bigger piece of food here. Somebody said she looks like she's dancing. She looks like she's dancing. <laughs> yes, she does. Again, very animated bird. That's her personality. Um, it's a lot of fun to show off for you guys here. Definitely very animated. Yes. Now you guys might notice under her eyes, she has those dark streaks. Those are called malar marks. And the malar marks are used uh, for the exact same reason that football players and baseball players uh, put dark streaks under their eyes. It's to protect their eyeballs from the sun. So when they're hunting, they use their eyes to find their food. And since they hunt during the day, they had to find a clever way uh, to keep the sun out of their eyes. So their malar marks do just that. It absorbs the sunlight so the sun goes there instead of their eyeballs. Again, we're here with our American Kestrel and our trainer McKenna. He was talking about them. If you guys have any questions, feel free to put those in the comments. We can try our best to answer them for you. We're just taking some time to watch her eat, though. Yes, it's very entertaining. <laughs> I don't think a lot of people get to see them actually eat, too. So it's really neat to see how they move their feet around to handle their food and how they utilize their beak. Somebody asked, how did she come to CRC? How did she come to CRC? That's a really good question. Um, so she was one uh, that was brought to our rehab center as a little itty bitty baby. Now, when raptors hatch out of the egg, uh, they have to look to their parents to kind of identify who they are, how they should be acting, how they communicate, um, and that's called imprinting. So they really, really depend on their parents to learn how to be a kestrel. And uh, when she was found as a baby, uh, she was kept by the people who found her for a couple of days. So they're the ones that brought her food. So she associated food with people. Uh, now, here at the Carolina Raptor Center, we do have foster parents, and so uh, if we have the foster parents of that species, we do put baby birds in with those foster parents. Um, but she was showing us signs that she had imprinted on people, 
uh, instead of acting afraid of us um, or the rehab staff, she would greet us and she would gladly take food from us. So we knew she couldn't be released because she wouldn't know how to find food. She depended on humans to find her food. So we decided um, to see if she would make a good ambassador species. So for people at home tuning in, um, it is baby season. We have a couple of nests around the Raptor Center here um, of birds out in the wild and we love to tune in and take a peek at those cute babies. Um, if you have them in your yards, that's awesome. Uh, but the best thing for you guys to do is leave the baby birds alone. Um, that way they can survive on the wild. They learn how to be birds from their parents <laughs> and that's the best way that they can survive. So we have a few questions, McKenna. Yeah. Um, are the head markings part of camouflage? Ooh, are the head markings part of camouflage? So uh, with birds, their feather colors do tell us a lot about where they live. So a lot of her chest feathers um, blend in well with grasses. It's kind of tan and brown and she loves out in the wild. These guys will soup and um, hunt bugs in the grasses. Um, her head color is blue and um, on a male their wings will be blue. And so if you guys look at the back of her neck, if she stands up here. Might be able to get a overhead view a little bit. Um, she has <laughs> two, it looks like eyeballs on the back of her neck, two dark spots. And that is to trick any predators um, into, if they decide to go after her, to go after the back of her head instead of her face. So she has a better chance of surviving. These guys, even though they are raptors, they're apex predators. Big raptors do eat little raptors. So she does have a couple natural predators out in the wild. Uh, those mainly being bigger raptors. I think that's so cool. They have so many cool adaptations. Yeah, these guys truly, again, are one of my favorite raptors. So many cool adaptations. Big personalities for such a little bird. Um, is she a full-size adult? Is she a full-size adult? Good question. So she is full-grown. Raptors are full-grown by the time they leave the nest. So about four or five months old. And they need to be full-grown because they have to start learning how to catch their own food. And so they need to be able to catch that full-size rabbit, that full-size mouse, uh, depending on the raptor, um, once they leave the nest. Now what's really cool about these guys too is they do really long migrations. So for the kestrels that live up north in Canada, in the Midwest, um, the, those guys will migrate all the way down to South America uh, once it's winter time. Here in North Carolina, these guys can be seen um, year round. They usually don't migrate too much. We may think it gets cold here, but it's nothing compared to up north um, and how cold it gets during the winter time up there. So these guys do a long migration and they'll even follow um, dragonfly migrations and other insect migrations all the way down to South America. So they have food on the go. They can just fly, snag up a dragonfly, get a quick snack and keep on going. Somebody asked that if she was left with a different type of raptor, would they imprint with them? I think the question is, so if we put her with younger birds like baby birds how would that affect their behavior yeah so imprinting is really hard um to describe because it has to do with their brain and it has to do with bird behavior and that is such a complicated topic because we truly don't know what these guys are thinking um so i really don't know how to answer that question right now we can definitely do some research um because there have been different papers on if these guys imprint on one species, um, they do mate with their own species still. And of course there's papers contradicting that. So the raptor world is a little bit more complicated um, and we're still trying to learn all about it.
We just got rained on and she wasn't yeah. too thrilled with it. The wind knocked some rain off of the leaves. <laughs> to add on to that answer, so we do have some birds on our resident side, um, the birds that spend their entire lives with us, who do sometimes help raise baby birds in rehab. Um, those birds are not what we would consider imprinted because we want those birds that are hopefully going to be released into the wild to have more um, wild-like behaviors and not relying on things like people for food. We really need them to learn how to hunt and things of that nature. Oh, somebody said, love your name. My daughter's name is McKenna also. Oh, there's not a whole lot of McKennas out there. I love hearing um, this special name. Do you let her free fly? Do we let her free fly? So with her, no. We mainly um, go to different schools together and we don't let our birds free fly in schools. There's way too many uh, different obstacles that we may face. If we're in a gym, they usually have really tall rafters and birds like to be tall. So if we were to let her free fly and she was up there, I wouldn't have a way um, to get her down. So for her, when we take her home, all of this equipment comes off and she can fly to her favorite perches. <laughs> <laughs> Then. With our birds who are on our program side of things, um, we make sure that we find not only the right bird for that job, but the right job for each of our birds that they're comfortable with. So for her, she is such a great, um, what we would call like a glove ambassador. So she has helped um, teach so many kids and other groups. Um, about raptors and about kestrels and she's very very good at her job i bet you guys are falling in love with her over the internet so just imagine seeing her up close in person she does a great job inspiring people for sure how much can she eat in one day how much can she eat in one day so today i prepped her 30 grams of quail um and so that's about like a whole mouse if we were gonna like compare. So she got a whole average size mouse. So that's about how much she could eat. Um, our birds get fed a lot of food. So some days she's still full from yesterday and won't eat the full amount that I prep for her. And that's just fine. Sky asks, does she have a name? Does she have her name? Yes, this is Belle. Belle the American Kestrel. And she was actually named, as much as we are all very big Disney fans here, she was actually not named after Beauty and the Beast. Um, her name's spelled B-E-L-L. -L. She's named after a um, type of aircraft. So we get a lot of inspiration um, from the raptor world in many different aspects of our human lives. And a big part of that is flying flight aircrafts. And so they have so many cool adaptations that help them fly and fly fast. And so we, we look to things of that nature when we're naming a lot of our birds. So it has some kind of natural history or just like a cool fact weaved in there. Let you guys get one more good look at her. We are running a little bit low on food. <laughs> and it is raining off and, and, and on. Raining <laughs> off and on. She does so. appreciate that. As oh, much. Yeah. it's on cue. <laughs> yeah. She has a nice roof and a, one of her favorite perching is under that roof. So she's like, take me back, let me be dry. It was really funny walking around our trails today. Um, you can tell the birds that don't mind the rain because they're absolutely drenched. And then they have feathers that stick up in all directions. They look like they have really bad bed head. When you wake up and your hair is just crazy, that's what they look like today. Whereas other raptors are very, very dry. They don't really appreciate the rain as much as some of the other birds do. So it's funny after a long rain watching the birds um, and see which ones like the rain and which ones prefer to stay dry. We'll let her finish up this last piece of food and then we can go on home. <laughs> she might take her time with it. Yeah, she's getting full too. The slower she eats, that tells me that, you know, she's slowing down a little bit. Do you want to answer one last question? Yeah, one last question. Um, let's see. Where do kestrels like to build nests in the wild? Ooh, where do these guys like to build nests in the wild? 
guys like to build nests in the wild? Good question again. So these guys, um, so they have a couple different favorite spots. Um, one of them, if you guys have a handmade or a homemade nest box, um, it just looks like a birdhouse, but there's specific dimensions for kestrels. You can put it up in a field and just above the grass line, they love to go hunting in fields. Um, if you don't have that, that's okay. You can find trees um, that are lining fields and they like to nest right along the fields where they mainly hunt. Yeah, these guys like open areas. All sorts of yummy insects that you can find. All right, thank you guys so much for tuning in. We really appreciate all your support um, so we can show off our lovely ambassadors even if it's not in person. Thank you guys again and tune in with us tomorrow.